What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for video number two of the day and the big news of the day, ladies and gentlemen. The NFL schedules are officially out and we are going to be going over the Jaguars' third hardest schedule in the NFL. How many wins are we thinking? What are some easy games? What are some hard games? What games am I personally looking forward to? We're going to answer all those questions in this video, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, this is the Jaguars 2019 schedule. So first and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately the Jaguars will not be having a Sunday night or a Monday night game for probably like what? What is this now? Probably like the seventh year in a row? You know, when you're a small market, you don't win a lot of games. You're not going to be getting those primetime games. That's just the way she goes. The Jags have only had one successful season in the last 10 years. I can't necessarily say I am surprised by that, but it is unfortunate when teams like Dallas get like four Sunday night games. And, you know, Cleveland's gotten some, and, I, and there's been some chatter in some Jags Facebook group saying, if the Browns get primetime games, why don't the Jags? It's because on paper right now, the Browns look like probably the team to beat in the AFC, other than maybe New England, because, you know, New England's New England, but Cleveland deserves all of their primetime games that they get. You know, it's been a long time coming for them. It was like us when we entered the 2017 season. We finally got a Sunday night game with the Steelers, but it ended up getting flexed out. But, you know, there's not... This isn't a Browns video, but quit hating on the Browns. The Browns deserve it. I mean, they've came a long, long ways. So, let's go over the schedule. Week 1, we're taking on the Kansas City Chiefs at home. The NFL couldn't even throw us a bone. Like, let's, why can't we play, like, the Bucks week one or something? Like, why do we have to play the defending runner-up in the AFC, the Kansas City Chiefs week one? I just, I don't, I don't understand it. I'm kind of upset about that one because we're more than likely going to start off the season with a big fat L. And this is the game that we are going to be really previewing towards the preseason and things like that. We're going to be talking about it a lot. So, Man, it just sucks. It sucks because last year we played the Giants week one and we were all kind of anticipating a victory. But when we're playing Kansas City week one, no one's really anticipating a victory. But again, it really depends on how Nick Foles does because this could be a good matchup with our defense matching up against Patrick Mahomes because a lot of people forget, though we got blown out last time we played the Chiefs, you know, we made a little bit of a comeback, but the Jag defense stepped up and played well against Mahomes. I believe he threw two interceptions that game. So if the defense can ball out and Nick Foles can do just enough, this could be a winnable game. And a lot of these games could be winnable as well. But from the outside looking in, you know, you don't know how Nick Foles is going to be doing. So, you know, you can't really count on Nick Foles to be great and you really can't count on him to be bad that's why with all these people giving out their season projections now that the schedules came out and we're gonna do that because I love getting views and I know you guys will eat that shit up but you know you really can't say for certain how this job war team is gonna be without seeing how Nick Foles performs it's gonna come down to how Nick Foles performs this season to see how well the Jags are really gonna be doing in 2019 Week two after that, we go to Houston to face the Texans. That is also a 1 p.m. Eastern start time. So we got 10 games where Treeb has to get up at 10 a.m. We also have a record six uh, games that are not at the 1 p.m. time slot. There will be at the 425, the 125 time slot for me here in Idaho. Uh, Houston week two. I like playing divisional opponents early because, you know, it's early in the season. They're not, you know, all fully really ready to go. So this is a chance for the Jags to sneak a early division victory, and then the week after that, they play the Tennessee Titans on Thursday night football on the NFL Network. How many years in a row have we played the Tennessee Titans on the on, on Thursday night football? I swear to God, every year we'll get the one primetime game. It's a Thursday night game, which Thursday night games are terrible. They're awful in general, and, and I just hate it, but we're going to face Tennessee. And why I hate it is because I have to work, and I have to work through it, and then I got to watch most of it at work, and then, you know, I should actually be doing my job, you know, but the Jags are important, and this YouTube shit is important. So week three, look for me not to be going live because it's a Thursday night game against the Titans on the NFL Network. Again, an early divisional opponent. Let's try and actually beat the Titans this time around. This will be at our house uh, in Jacksonville. So hopefully this is the game that turns it around and we can finally beat the Titans for the first time since 2016. Week four, we travel to Denver at a 425 uh Start time to face Joe Flacco and the Denver Broncos. The Jags defense and the Jags in general have 
pretty good relative success against Joe Flacco. So this could be a game where the Jags are going to be uh, should be able to win and participate. I mean, and uh, play well. They should be able to play good football uh, against Denver in Week Four. Another early game against a so-so opponent, and uh, should be able to sneak a victory there. So hopefully we are able to. Uh, capture the victory week four at Denver. Week five, we travel to Carolina, so a two-game uh, away, a two-game road trip. We go to the Carolina Panthers at a 1 p.m. start time on CBS, and then week seven, we take on the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are a team the Jags should be able to beat. That's a winnable game, and especially I like how it comes after the Panthers and the Saints because the Jags are going to need a winnable game in that stretch. They're going to need a winnable game after facing a team like Carolina and New Orleans, who are two perennial playoff teams that are very, very well ran. They're two great teams, and they're in the same division. So, you know, going back-to-back NFC South opponents that we might struggle against, probably will, uh, in week four and five, I mean, week five and six, we're going to need like a week seven game against the Bengals to kind of boost the confidence up a little bit. So I kind of like where that game is scheduled. Then we face the New York Jets. Uh, Le'Veon Bell and the New York Jets midway through the season, so that's it's another good game. You know, two ba- after two back-to-back hard games, we have two back-to-back winnable games, so that should be interesting. And then Week Nine, we travel to London to face the Houston Texans, and hopefully at our home, our home in London, hopefully we are going to be able to snatch that victory away because the Jags always seem to perform just a bit better in London, and this is the first time we're going to be taking on a divisional opponent in London, so hopefully our fortune kind of turns for the good and we're able to capture that victory uh, week 9 against the Houston Texans in London. And then we have a week 10 bye week. Your boy hates late bye weeks. I like to just get done and over with. I would rather have a week 4 to a week 8 bye week than a week 10 bye week. A week 10 bye week is hard, especially with the teams you play before the bye. You got the Chiefs is going to be a tough one. Both the tight. We're going to face the Titans. We're going to face the Texans. Excuse me. Both times, twice, you know, before, oh, I guess not, because we face them week nine. We're going to face the Texans twice before the bye week. So those are going to be games to keep your eye on and two games that are really important uh, to see how the division race really pans out. So the Jags are going to have to perform well uh, against Houston in both of those games. And the Tennessee game on Thursday, the Jags again are going to have to try and do something. So you got the Chiefs, Texans, Titans, Broncos, Panthers, Saints, Bengals, Jets, Texans before the week 10 bye week. So that is a rough go around. Hopefully, you know, if the Jags can push out a 500 record after 10, after these nine games, or I guess they couldn't pull off a 500 record. If we're 5-4, five 4-5 and, four, four and five after these games, I consider that a win. If we chalk it up and we get 3-2 victories, then oh my goodness, this season is going to be hard to watch. But if we chop up five games, you know, five wins in that uh, nine-game stretch, I think that'll be a win for us, and then we'll be able to kind of make a push towards the playoffs. And then after the bye week, we go to Indianapolis to play the Colts for the first time. So we played the Texans really early in the season. For the Colts, we play them really late, and that kind of scares me because, you know, this is when Andrew Luck's really going to be finding his footing and, you know, really trying to make that playoff push for the Colts, and they're probably going to be chasing after the division. So I don't necessarily like the Week 11 uh, game. And then we face him again in Week 17 to end the season, and hopefully by then... You know, we'll know how the division race is shaping up. This could be for the division. Uh, I don't really like Houston or Tennessee this year, but, you know, to each of their own. Tennessee always smacks us, so, you know, I can't talk too much smack to the Titans because, you know, again, they always seem to have our number. But the Colts are the team that I'm really, I'm really looking to win the AFC South this year. I think the Colts have that potential. So we face them in Week 11, then Week 12 after not facing the Titans. And since Week 3, we're going to face the Titans, and this won't be at Tennessee. Then Week 13, we take on Tampa Bay. Week 14, we got our Chargers matchup at 4:05. That one is a... Uh, I feel like we face the Chargers almost every single year, so... And facing them late in the season, that's no bueno either. You know, most of the talented, you know, perennial playoff teams we, we're going to be playing is going to be early on in the season, and I think I would rather have that than play them later in the season. Teams, you know, that we're playing later in the season that are worrisome, I mean, you got, like, the Chargers, the Titans, and the Colts. Titans and the Colts inside the division. The AFC South is really going to be a dogfight towards the end to see who wins that division. But, you know, you got the Chargers as well. 
And you also got the Atlanta Falcons in Week 16. That could be uh, up in the air as well. In Week 15, we go to Oakland to face the Raiders. And I always say the Raiders, I think, are going to be kind of a sleeper team this year, especially if they hit on those draft picks. You know, keep your eyes out for the Oakland Raiders and Week 15. And then Week 17 again, wrap things up with Indianapolis. So my overall thoughts are that we're facing the more difficult teams early on in the season. So that's good for us because they might not be on their A game. But we got to make sure in those games that we are on our A game because we can't go in and face like the Saints and not be on our A game because Drew Brees will literally tear us apart. And it's going to be really interesting to see like quarterback play against our defense. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, last time we played him, two interceptions. Uh, Cam Newton, I don't think Cam Newton, we haven't faced the Panthers in a while, so Cam Newton's going to be interesting. Uh, Drew Brees again, Deshaun Watson, Andrew Locke as well, Phillip Rivers, Matt Ryan. You know, we face... A lot of really solid elite quarterbacks. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this defense fares. If the defense can prevent teams from scoring, you know, more than 20 points and Nick Foles is able to, you know, be a good quarterback, manage to put up 20, 17 points, then I could see us winning a decent amount of games. I'm not going to spoil exactly how many games I think we win in the 2019 season because that's another video for another day. But I will say that, the schedule could have panned out a little bit better. Regardless, the Jags have the third hardest schedule in the league. So it's going to be a hard go no matter which way you slice it. Uh, it just depends on what Jaguar team shows up and how we attack uh, these teams when we play them. So again, you know, face the tougher teams mostly towards the beginning of the season, which is good. But there are some tough teams down the road that we will be facing later on in the season. And I'm just hoping Nick Foles can really take this Jags team out of the gutter, be a, a good quarterback, and lead us to some victories to try and make it to the playoffs again. And that was me going over the Jaguars 2019 schedule. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Treep Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Treep Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixley. You can also pick up some merch over on my Teespring account. That is teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash Treep Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.